we now move beyond pure description and start to assess some ways to, uh, in a statistical hypothesis test uh, approach, detect deviations from complete spatial randomness in favor of either clustering or regular patterns. And in this particular uh, part, we will go over a number of so-called nearest neighbor statistics because they are based on the computation of the distance to the nearest neighbor. So first, I'll outline the principle and then we'll cover three very commonly used functions the G function, the F function, and the J function. So first, the general idea. Um, and it's important when we talk about this to keep in mind, again, some very strange terminology. The event is the actual observed location of an event. So they're all points, but the events are points where something happens, and then the term point is used for reference points. So these are not necessarily points where something happens, but they could be, typically they are points on a grid. And then we have two kinds of distances. We have the distances between the events themselves, which is referred to as event to event distance. And then we have the distances from the reference points to the events, which is referred to as point to event distance. And so the idea is um, that we are going to construct a statistic based on the distribution or on the characteristics of these nearest neighbor distances. And uh, as it happens, under complete spatial randomness, so when we have a homogeneous Poisson point process, we can actually derive exactly um, the characteristics of the nearest neighbor distance. In fact, it follows a very specific mathematical formula. So then our testing strategy will consist of finding ways to detect deviations from this strict mathematical form formula for CSR. So that's the idea. We have our points. We can either compute the distance from each event to the closest other event, or we can put a grid over the point pattern, and for each of the reference points, we compute the distance to the nearest event to that reference point. And so this gives us, for every point, I should say for every event, a nearest distance, and which has a distribution that we can characterize, and for every point, the distance to it nears the nearest event, which again has a distribution which we can characterize. So that's the general idea. So how do we implement this? Um, as I mentioned, we just compute these distances, the nearest distances, and then uh, characterize this distribution relative to what it would be under complete spatial randomness. And as I mentioned, luckily, the characteristics of the homogeneous Poisson point process, process are such that we can actually have a specific mathematical expression for this. One thing to keep in mind is that there are um, many, many nearest neighbor statistics. Uh, and this is because we need to characterize the distribution of the nearest neighbor statistics. So we could take the minimum, we could take the maximum, we could take the average, we could take some measure of spread around the mean. The three functions that we will consider here take the complete cumulative distribution. And so that's, uh, at this point in the best practice, that is the preferred approach, is not to focus on a single summary characteristic of the nearest neighbor distance distribution, but to take the full cumulative distribution. So the first one we consider is the so-called G function, which is also referred to as the event to event distribution. So as it says, it deals with the nearest neighbor distances between events. And it takes specifically the cumulative distribution of these distances. So 
The way this works is you get, um, you compute the nearest neighbor distances for each event, the distance to its closest other event. So that gives you, you know, let's say we have the 149 points for Chicago, that gives us 149 event to event distances. Then we sort these from smallest to largest, and then we construct a cumulative distribution. So for every distance r, this gives us the fraction of the distribution of all the near event to event nearest distances that is less than or equal to that distance r. And that function is the gr function. So we can plot this function against the distance, and that gives us the cumulative uh, distribution. In practice, um, we have to deal with this issue called edge corrections, which I purposely haven't talked about too much because it's very technical and to some extent all edge corrections are a little bit arbitrary. And the problem is that um, goes back to the original discussion of the bounding polygon of the point pattern. So if the point pattern does not go beyond that polygon, then we in fact have all the points. But if the polygon is more or less arbitrary, then there may still be points outside the polygon that we don't count. And more importantly, some of these points may be the nearest event to events within the polygon. So the rationale behind edge corrections is to somehow reflect that uh, for the points that are close to the boundary of the bounding polygon. So for those points, there is some correction that, um, in a sense, very loosely put, tries to estimate what points might be outside the polygon boundary that could have been the nearest event to the events. So that's the essence of these edge corrections. In, in practice, one should always carry out edge corrections, but one should also keep in mind that they're only uh, a proxy, they're only, if you wish, a guesstimate of what may be happening outside the boundary. Of course, the best way to approach this, if you have um, the points that are outside your polygon boundary, then you can actually, you don't need an edge correction because you can figure out which of these events might actually be the nearest events to the events inside your polygon, and so you can deal with it uh, that way. So uh, what is this gr, this g function as a function of distance, like under complete spatial randomness? And um, we go back to some of the discussion we had earlier on when we talked about the formal properties of a Poisson point process. And, and specifically, uh, we had a little example where we looked at the probability of having no points within a given circle. And so uh, we'll use that same rationale here. So the fact um, that your nearest neighbor, the closest event to you, is at distance r, that means by definition that there are no other neighbors closer than r. So in other words, that circle with radius r has no points in it. And so we can actually figure that out under the Poisson distribution. We've seen this earlier. This is, uh, you know, using the area of the circle and the intensity of the process. Um, pi r2 is the area of the circle with radius r. Lambda is the intensity of the process. So um, we can... Um, figure out what this is. And then, of course, the probability of, of finding a nearest neighbor in less than a distance r is the complement of that. We don't need to know what distance is it, as, as long as there is one in, in that distance uh, closer. So that function, 1 minus the negative exponential of lambda pi r2, is uh, plotted against r. With, of course, you might say, well, where does the lambda come from? The lambda 
is the average intensity of the process because the assumption of course under the homogeneous Poisson process it's homogeneous for a reason that means the intensity is constant so we can take the average intensity as an estimate of lambda of course you have to keep in mind this is an estimate of lambda under the null hypothesis of, hi of homogeneity if lambda is not homogeneous then we have to use a different approach now that gets very technical and we don't really have time to get into the details of this but this this is something you should keep in mind when you have a highly heterogeneous point process then assuming homogeneity is not really a good way to approach it so how does this then look and we have uh, the example of the liquor stores in Chicago first of all the blue dashed line is the one minus uh, negative exponential lambda pi r squared. That is the uh, function, the cumulative function for the uh, CSR, which is the um, homogeneous Poisson point process. And then the three lines, that the jaggedy lines that are above it, are three different um, computations of the G function taken into account some of the standard edge correction procedures. And um, in this particular case, the edge corrections don't make a, a huge uh, difference, and they're all pretty much the same. So this is a G function. It's a cumulative function. It, it increases. And um, at the end, it um, has all the points in it. So um, we see that for this particular point pattern, the largest nearest neighbor distance is about 2,500. So uh, how do we uh, interpret this and, and how do we carry out inference for it? Because you know, due to randomness, we don't know as such, just by looking at the graph, whether this um, graph, the G function, is actually different enough from the curve under complete spatial randomness to reject the null hypothesis. So the problem is, as is the case in, in many spatial statistics, that the analytical results for this uh, tend to be very intractable, very, very complicated, or can only be worked out um, when taking a number of very restrictive and typically fairly unrealistic assumptions. So. Uh, we typically take the easy way out in, in that, uh, as we've already discussed a number of times, we will replicate, we will mimic complete spatial randomness by random simulation. And basically the way this is carried out, um, in our case we know the total number of points and we create a random pattern for those points within the same bounding box and then we compute the GR value uh, function for that particular random pattern. And then we do it again. And then we do it again. So now we have for every R, or you know, in practice this is for a band around R, we have uh, sorted the values for GR. And we take these values and take the lowest one and take the highest one, and these then form what we call an envelope, a simulation envelope. In other words, the simulation envelope gives us an idea of the variability of the G function under spatial randomness. And in our example, you see the gray band around the theoretical value. The red dashed line is the theoretical value. And the gray band shows for every distance the smallest value and the largest value of GR that we obtained out of 100 simulations. So we create 100 different random spatial point patterns. For each of these point patterns, we compute the G function. And then for each distance, we take the smallest and the largest value of the G function for that distance 
from our set of 100 different G functions. So you can see there's a lot of computation involved in this. Now, so we have a clear view of what the range, the variability of the G function would be under spatial randomness for our particular spatial point pattern. And we can now assess that the function that we computed, the black line on the top, is outside of this envelope. So one thing we can already state is that this curve that we computed for our data is not compatible with what it would be under complete spatial randomness. Now that still doesn't tell us whether this is clustering or uh, regular inhibition. And uh, the, the way it is interpreted, because it, it pertains to the nearest distance uh, to events, is that when the G function is above the randomization envelope, um, in essence what this means is that you have a lot of uh, events that have very small inter-event distances, so very quickly the curve climbs up. Uh, that suggests clustering. And the opposite inhibition or a regular pattern uh, results when the G function is below the randomization envelope. That means that the uh, the points uh, that the, the inter-event distances at small distances are much rarer, and so the, the curve, the cumulative function, only climbs up uh, very slowly. And to illustrate this, I have three artificially generated point patterns, and for each I have the G function. The theoretical curve is in red, the G function is in black, and then the blue is the lower boundary of the simulation envelope, and the green is the upper boundary of the simulation envelope. And it's it's a good exercise to kind of keep yourself honest and to take a good look at the point pattern on the left and think to yourself, well, is this random or is this clustered? And then you will see how often you're wrong, uh, except in extreme cases. So in this particular case, this is a purely random pattern and the black line actually tracks the theoretical line very nicely and is well uh, in near the center of the uh, randomization envelope or simulation envelope. Then if we um, simulate one of our clustered patterns, which we talked about in the, in the previous part when we talked about theoretical models, we can, we can set this up. And, and so this is a clustered process, Poisson clustered process, and what we see here is that we do climb out of the envelope uh, above the uh, green line for a range of distances. And then these ranges can then be interpreted in, in terms of particular processes that may have generated the points. And then the opposite is a dispersed or regular point pattern. Again, we use one of our theoretical processes to actually generate this, in this case a Matern 2 process, and here we see that at least in the beginning distances the black line is clearly outside the envelope and then it gets in the envelope, so it's not statistically significant at that point. But again, below the envelope is inhibition or regular patterns. So just to recap, the idea behind the nearest neighbor Statistics is that you compute either the distance from an event to its nearest event or the distance from a reference point to its nearest event and then characterize that distribution and contrast it with what it would be under complete spatial randomness. We um, quantify the variability under spatial randomness by a simulation which results in a simulation or randomization envelope for the G curve in particular, if the curve is above the envelope, it implies clustering. And if the curve is below the envelope, it implies a regular pattern or inhibition.